Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a card using some of the newer Picket Fence Studio release, along with some oldie but goodies. And I'm also using my Olo markers, which are still fairly new to me. And I will have a link, though, at the end of the video to my playlist that I'll continue to add to using these markers. And then I did some paper pouncing with oxide inks and just, I just had fun. So, as always, links to all the things are in the description box below the video. They are affiliate links. All that means is that if you click on any of my links and place an order, I get a little kickback at the end of the month, which is at no cost to you. And that's just what helps pay the bills, etc. And yeah, all the links will be below. Keep watching to see how I made the card, and then the end screen I'll have other related videos and playlists and whatnot, and let's get right into it. So I started with the Picket Fence Garden Topper Wafer Die, and I die cut this from some Simon Says Stamp Smooth White cardstock, and then popped out all the little interior bits and whatnot, because I want to do alcohol marker coloring, and for me it's just easier to remove all these bits first. So I just used my little die pick, poked out all the little little bits and pieces, and I did this twice. So I've got two die cuts to color here because I wanted to shift one of them and kind of have, so I'll have two layers just to give everything a little more depth. And then to color these, I'm using my Olo markers. And if for those watching that haven't seen me use these markers yet, I've only had them for about a month or so, something like that. And I, I'm using them as, as I call this stublets. <laughs> These have connectors so you can connect um, either two markers together, have two different shades, or you can have like the brush tip, which is what I use. And there's also a chisel tip option. So you can have, you know, two different tips on one marker. I don't have the chisel tips. I personally don't color with chisel tips. I just use brush, the brush tips. So for now, for me, I'm just using them like this. It looks weird. It honestly, I and I have hand issues. This doesn't bother me at all. But yeah, you can totally connect them, use them. There's also um, like brush connectors, like a, a just a long piece you can connect to make them a little more ergonomic. Like there's, there's options, but I'm weird. And this is how I'm using them <laughs> and it works. It works for me. So yeah, just thought I would explain that because it really throws people off seeing me. <laughs> seeing me color with these but I just went through and literally started kind of right to left that's it was just the luck of the draw that's what I decided to do and coloring these in I've got all of the caps on screen as I'm coloring so you can see like what specific um, colors I used and I was just grabbing things kind of at random you know I was like hmm, this looks like it would be you know purple this looks like it would be like it it's just fun, you know? And then as I was doing this, I was like, oh, this die set would be really good too, to just die cut from black, you know, do like a silhouette type of a card and a fun background. Like it's just fun. I like it. And it's a nice size too. This, I made an A2 card with this. My card is four and a quarter by five and a half. This um, takes up a good chunk. So it's a, definitely another one of those ones where you could do like larger cards, you know, five by seven, etc. Because it's not, it's not a, it is not a little tiny delicate die cut, that's for sure. So I just kept wa working back and forth between these um, die cuts and coloring them in with my Olos. And then in between um, the colors, I was just using little bits of a hand sanitizer and a cloth just to clean it up because I'm working on a glass work surface. And I just do that so that I don't end up picking up some of that marker on my work surface with some of the lighter colors it's not going to hurt them you can just scribble it off on like a scrap of paper it's fine but this just keeps me from making too much of a mess if I kind of clean up in between the colors so I kept working my way uh, across these die cuts and the other thing I do is when you've got a variety of like plant images greenery whether it's die cuts or stamped images etc is to mix up the greens you use don't use all the same you know the same shades the same colors the same blends of greens you want to mix it up because you know that one it's going to make it look more interesting and two that's literally how plants are you know there's a million different shades of green out there so again I was just picking ones at random <laughs> I was like oh haven't used this combo let's use this for the next one 
So I kept working my way um, across all of these little die cuts. And then as my little final bit, um, to me, I was kind of thinking that this looks sort of lavender-esque. But that's also why I like die cuts like this. It's kind of open to interpretation, in my opinion, anyway, you know? So colored these in. And then, of course, I'm going to splatter them. Like, of course, that's just what we do. So I'm using the um, Picket Fence Paper Splatter Watercolor Liquid White Snowflake. This looks, and I've mentioned this in many videos, this looks or gives the same sort of a look as like Ranger Perfect Pearl Powder mixed with water, which I've done for many years. So just shake it up really well, stuck some on my palette, and then I just use my fan brush and I splattered this all over these um, these little die cuts. So it's gonna give it some shimmer and some texture, but it's not going to be uh, super distracting. So I did, and I did a little extra, a little extra. Can never have too much in my opinion. <laughs> So after I added all of that splatter, I am going to start creating the other elements for this card. So I'm using the new basic die cutting die set. There's a whole bunch of dies in this set. I'm only using this little like window frame and then this little like window box wafer die. And I die cut them from some wood grain paper. So you, you'll probably be able to see it better on the on the little window box you can still see it on the frame and especially in real life but on camera it's a little mm. so i have those die cuts i stuck them to one of my picket fence paper uh inking palettes just a good little grippy surface to hold these in place so i can add all my ink and then i'm pouncing on different shades of brown oxide inks the first one was gathered twigs and then i'm going in with some walnut stain just using one of my little uh pint size paper pouncers here and I'm purposely not going for a like a smooth blend. Like I want texture. You know, I've got the wood grain texture already because that's what the cardstock is. But then like the texture of the ink and whatnot. And then to add even more texture, I'm going in with just a little sea sponge. This is a tip I picked up from Dawn Wolfslegel. Her and the sea sponges. I, oh, every time she uses them, I was like, I need these in my life. <laughs> so yeah, just a little sea sponge. And I just swirled it. This time I'm using scorched timber. So super dark brown. And again, you don't see it as much on here, but I'm going to use it on my background as well. And oh, I love, I love the texture it adds. So after I did all that, set those aside, my background is just a panel of smooth white cardstock. That's A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half. And I pulled out the brick and mortar stencil for this. And then I'm going to use fired brick, obviously, oxide ink with another little like pint size um, pouncer. And again, I'm not going for... Um, perfect even smooth application I want texture I want areas to be a little lighter a little darker etc because it just makes it look you know more fun I'm also not worried about the center of this because I'm going to die cut this so the center is irrelevant it's not going to be used so I'm just kind of going around the like outer perimeter of this cardstock with that fired um that fired brick oxide and then I went back in with um a little bit of the walnut stain and my little brown um pint size paper pouncer just here and there again just to add little little bits and then the final layer is going to be that uh, scorched timber again with the sea sponge and this oh this was fun again doesn't really show up much on camera you can see it in real life but it you know gave those little speckly bits which is perfect for brick so yeah love it so i just went over that remove the stencil remove my background and then i'm going to die cut that window frame from this background so that it can create an opening so I can put um, some cloud like a cloud scene behind this so I lined up that wafer die and then taped it into place with some um, craft perfect die tape and then I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine and I'm going to save the little window frame piece because I'm going to actually use that to stack with some other ones so I've got that window die cut and to frame it or like for the scene, I'm using one of the fabulously glossy A2 card fronts. This is the Cloud of Clouds of Dreams um, pack, which I've been hoarding because <laughs> they're pretty. <laughs> but you get multiples. So I took one and then adhered the the brick kind of frame to it with uh, my craft tacky glue. And then that actual frame there, I've kept 
and I'm going to adhere it to a couple of scraps that I die cut with that same frame wafer die. So that's going to build up some more dimension. So I've got, you know, a few layers, a little bit of depth going on here. This would also make a really good shaker card. I just, yeah, yeah. Hindsight, as always. It was like after I was done, I was like, oh. I could have put a piece of acetate behind like the the wood frame like layer and then popped it up with foam tape and then perfect little shaker you know how fun would that be ideas anyway <laughs> I layered everything together put the the top layer on with the wood grain and then I can just inlay this into the opening so now I've got like a brick wall and then the window frame and then I'm going to adhere together my two pieces of that garden topper, just slightly offsetting them. So I've got that, you know, kind of extra dimension and whatnot. And then I just use my paper trimmer to trim off this, this bottom piece that kind of holds everything together because I don't need it um, quite so thick because I'm going to cover that with the little window box. And then to adhere that to the card front, I put some foam strips right along the bottom of the window frame. And then I'm also going to put foam strips right along the bottom of the little uh, window box here so that everything is going to be like kind of all on one level, leveled out, etc. And I'm going to add a couple more little foam strips here because this is going to go edge to edge on this card front. So I'm going to stick those little foam, foam strips into place and then um, add a little line of glue just to the very bottom of the frame. And then off camera, I ended up actually adding bits of glue here and there behind um, some of those die cuts like higher up so that everything's adhered a little bit better to the card front. So got all that in place and then I can get this little window box piece and this one also it goes edge to edge like it's four and a quarter inches wide. So just to give you an idea of like the size of these so you could totally do this on a larger card but I'd committed to the A2 size. <laughs> So it works, but if you want like more space around it, etc., this 100% is going to work on a 5x7 card. So got everything in place, flipped this over, and then trimmed off all the bits hanging off the edges with my scissors. And then for the inside of the card, uh, it, again, top folding, A2, white note card, I'm going to use that brick and mortar stencil again, but this time I'm using fired brick distress ink, not the oxide, because I'm going over the entire inside. I've talked about this in videos. I don't like using... A lot of oxide inks on the insides of my cards just because sometimes pens can be like almost catch on the oxide because it sits on top of the cardstock. So I just use Distress Ink and one of my Picket Fence life-changing blender brushes and I'm going in with a very light hand. Like I'm just tapping the brush onto the ink pad and then tapping it onto the, my work surface and then just very lightly blending because I don't want this to be super intense because it is the inside. I want to be able to write over it and for it to be legible. So I just did a light little blend over that and then I put the card base into my Misty and I'm stamping some sentiments from the um, Brighter Days, yeah, Brighter Days Gerber Daisy stamp set. So I lined up the sentiment, stamped it with black ink, lined up the rest of the sentiment, also stamped it with black ink. And then I'm going to take a couple other sentiments from that set and I'm going to stamp them onto black cardstock. So I got them lined up and then I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool on the black cardstock. This is just going to help keep the embossing powder from clinging to anything other than the stamped sentiments. So I've got that anti-static powder tool on there and then inked up those sentiments with clear embossing ink and I'm going to ink them up, stamp them a couple times just to make sure I got like all of the sentiments stamped and then I'm going to coat these with some detail white embossing powder, tap off the excess and then melt that with um, my heat tool and then once those are smooth and melted leave them for a few seconds to cool off and then I can remove that excess anti-static powder with just a microfiber cloth. So rub that over there, remove the anti-static powder and then I'm going to use the coordinating wafer dies for this stamp set and I'm going to die cut both of these sentiments. So I'm going to tape these into place with just little bits of washi tape so that these don't shift when I run them through my die cut machine. So once I've got those taped into place, die cut the sentiments to adhere these to the um, card front because I've got so much dimension going on with all the layers of the frame and whatnot. So first off, 
adhered the card front to the card base. This is going to completely cover the A2 card base. So I adhered that with my craft tacky glue. And then, yeah, to adhere the sentiments, I'm going to use just some black um, foam squares. And I'm just going to like hold the sentiment kind of in place and then put the squares in place so that they fit around the, the dimension I've created with that frame. So once everything was in place, pop those off, stick that on, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of the little sentiment once I've figured out where I want to place it. And then just trim down one of those little foam squares just to fit fit into the little the little narrow bits there so it's all popped up with um, with that dimension. And then as my final like bit of little texture, I took one of my white gel pens. This is the Jelly Roll 10 gel pen and just added little little lines, little random highlights and whatnot to the die cuts of the garden topper that I colored with the Olo markers. This just gives it that little extra something, you know? So no rhyme or reason, no light source. I just added them wherever I thought they would look nice. <laughs> As usual, just flying by the seat of my pants. So once I've got these into place, this card is complete. So like I said in the intro, I will have links to all the supplies used and whatnot in the description box below the video. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my video, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.